Hey friends, do you know your worth? Do you ever feel marginalized or unseen by God and perhaps others? Or maybe discouraged because the weight of the burdens you are carrying never seem to end? This theme of God seeing us has really just been something God has been impressing upon my heart here at the beginning of this year. How does God seeing us make a difference? This past week, I was diagnosed still with rebound COVID and just hurting in my ribs and neck, inflammation and headaches. And sometimes you could just be tempted to ask, can I just get a break, right? I mean, after the flooding of the basement, COVID, a random rooster crying out all hours of the day, I thought a break would be nice. Well, The other night, a bird flies in our front door, and actually, this happened twice this past week, and getting that bird out of the house was kind of like an episode of I Love Lucy, right? (laughs) But I told my husband, maybe it was a sparrow, a sign from God to encourage me that his eye is still on me when things are hard. It's a wren, my husband flatly told me. Well, I told him I was going to call it a sparrow because we can't be sure, and it encouraged me. Then my husband said, God sees the wren too. Wrens do not appear in scripture by name, but birds do. Do you feel like the wren, friends? Do you think everyone else is seen but you sometimes? That things just seem so hard to push through? God sees the wren, and God sees you and me in our hard places. And this is significant because to be seen by the God of this universe is a display of our worth and his care. Just because pain or troubles remain does not mean God's remaining love is not greater or unable to help us overcome, even if we're still surrounded by problems. I want to take a quick look at some verses about how much God cares about us. Matthew 6, 25 through 34 says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more value than they? Can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not Even Solomon and all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. You know, the word worry occurs six times in this little passage. Worrying robs us of our worth. This word worry is the Greek word merimna, which when combined with the word may, makes it a negative. Literally, it means to take no thought. This passage speaks about worrying about the future. I remember when I miscarried my second child after a difficult first pregnancy, and I had asked God never to allow such pain in my life. Yes, I actually asked that. But now, after having walked through so many trials, I realized I never want to imagine the future apart from God's grace. The Theological Dictionary of the New Testament is a great resource, and it says that the Greeks considered worry as a concern for or about something that may have a future orientation, and it can then mean to be intent on something or to strive after something or an anxious expectation of something, anxiety in face of something, of what may come, or brooding, speculating, inquiring. The New Testament and frankly, all scripture, displays that human life is overwhelmed with cares. The exhortations not to worry presuppose, according to the theological dictionary in the New Testament again, that every man naturally cares for himself in his life, that he's concerned about himself, and that he is always intent on something and concerned about something. 
A theologian named Rudolf Bultmann said, one can hardly live one's life without cares. They even disturb sleep. This girl here. The frivolous try to drown them in love or drink, but at the last, only death can free us from them. I can't wait to talk more about that topic in the Bible Tribe podcast later this week. What a hope we have. But friends, when we give ourselves over to worry, we are saying we don't think God has it. God cannot handle our messes, so worrying is our best option. What is driving you nuts this week? What is wearing you down? Are you willing to lay it down right now at his feet and ask for his help? Surrender? 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us to cast our cares on God for he cares for us. Casting our cares means we choose to trust God with our cares and what he does with them. We release the desire to control these cares and trust God to do what only he can do with them. Luke 12, 4 through 7 says, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is for forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Worrying robs us of our worth. It causes us to try and cover ourselves because we don't think anyone cares enough to watch over us. God cares, friend. I want to close with one final verse. Psalm 84, three says, even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow, a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Our worth comes from our God alone. It was never anything we had in ourselves, for we are made in his image. And the more we draw near to God, the more we know our worth as his treasured possession. God bless you guys.